Lone Hoop Media presents our first full-length comedy horror audio film, Fetid Souls, coming summer 2021. Meet Pearl Artemis Goodman, 53, homemaker. Where are we, Pearl? <laughs> Welcome to the goddamn residence. Home is where the heart is. Your mom said it was okay if you stayed with me until your fever broke and you were healed. She did? Stern, but loving matriarch. Chuck, Rebecca, Siren, time for me and Mel's Ruby anniversary soiree. Come on, show yourselves. <laughs> Pearl, can we go back and listen to my favorite song? No, Chuck, we shan't be listening to any secular heathen songs today. Loving wife. Hey, how is my sweetheart doing? Always working on that damn blasted car. <laughs> I wish you'd spend as much time with me and God as you do with that car. Church deacon. You can't thwart the hand of God. His will be done. I am trying to save your soul, hon. Film and food connoisseur. Spoiler alert, C word. You're going to be dead by the end of this film. A runny fried egg, heaven on earth. Nothing quite like a fresh parsnip in the morning. That's what my daddy always used to say. Grand sympathizer. I'm sorry too. Sorry that sorry doesn't undo your slutton ways. Amateur proctologist. Prepare your anus. And all she really wants is a friend. I thought we was gonna be friends. And I know this may be too soon, but Siren. I love you. Will you be Pearl's friend? <laughs> we are friend. <laughs> Good luck. Welcome to our podcast and strap in for Movie Monday. Hi, I'm Minky Madison. Hello, I'm Jack Green. Today on Movie Monday, we discuss The Giver, the drama romance sci-fi movie. And the synopsis is, a young boy learns the reality behind their seemingly perfect society. What rating did you give it? Three and a half to four. Oh, that's pretty good. I went between two and a half and three, so I went with three. Oh, good. Okay. Okay, stop and watch the movie first now, or strap in for major spoilers. You could tell. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you read the book? No, I didn't even know it was based on a book, actually. The book probably would be better. Yeah, I I believe the book was better, yeah. So you read the book before watching it or after? Uh, I read the book when I was in school. Oh, it was okay. a required reading, but I had never seen the movie. I see. And that's really why, actually, is because I had read the book and I knew what I was in for, pretty much. Well, sounds like they stuck pretty good to the book then, because you read the book and you still liked it. Yeah, I mean, I, it's the, I don't know if it's that. It's just the, I like movies like that, and I like the concept. I haven't read the book in so long. It's hard for me to say how closely it stuck to the book. Mm. Um, I, from what I remember, it seemed to hold pretty closely to it. Well, that's good. Yeah, because I typically like whatever I look at first, whether that's the book or the movie. Not always, but it's my track record. Yeah, I think what they did was they probably had to take some liberties to connect it to the life that we have here or what they predict we will have in the future. 
I think that's what they were doing, basically. Because I'm sure all of that wasn't in the book. I believe they put the book in modern times. So, which meant adding stuff like drones. I don't believe they actually had drones in the book. And advanced computers. So, I think, like I said, it's kind of similar to the book. Start with what you like go into your pros. Okay. I like the cast. They seem to have, like, everyone from the dude to Eric Northman to Ian Gallagher, Will Streep to motherfucking Taylor Swift. That was part of why I liked the movie as much as I did and gave it the three, just because I at least liked the acting. And I do like the base idea of it, because although it's been done before, and apparently the book is really old, so it might have been one of the first to do it. <laughs> the idea of a perfect community that isn't so perfect after all, and the village idiot has to basically take matters into their own hands to figure out what's going on and like stop the evil people behind everything yeah. and the shots, the emotions in check and things like that. So mm-hmm. I do like the concept. So I did enjoy, like, I won't say I loved it by any means, but I did enjoy some aspects of it. And um, so I do think it's a good watch. And Jeff Bridges has a good catchy piano moment. I liked that a lot. That was funny. Or, well, not funny. That was just, I liked it. <laughs> but it actually did have some funny seemingly intentional inconsistencies like when they were saying that there's no competition but then the very next all your pros or your cons my pros they probably sound like cons but they're actually pros but they were saying that there's no competition and then the very next scene is them weighing babies and like arguing over who won like which baby won so i think they did that on purpose because it didn't match up to what they just got through saying and it was funny that they were calling an elephant a hippo because they were extinct and they didn't know the difference. And I liked some of the interesting things that they brought up from global warming where there's no snow and they didn't even know what a sled was and that the animals were extinct and stuff like that. It's sad, but it was interesting to think about. And that's really all my pros. Yeah, I felt the same way that you did, that you described, you know, is what I thought. Um, oh, pros wise. Well, yeah, except the white babies. That's one of my cons because it didn't make sense. Yeah, and I, I thought it was kind of funny, which is the only reason as a pro, but I agree. It doesn't make sense, but it did make me laugh, so I made it a good thing. But you're right, like, consistency-wise, it's not. <laughs> so it, it is technically, I guess, a, a con. Yeah, it's a major flaw, I think, in the film, because it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Like, it, the entire premise, like, kind of breaks down at that point. Um, yeah, was it like that in the book, do you know? Like, did they have inconsistencies like that, or was it just really the movie? I haven't read it in a long time, but I don't believe there's any... Uh, oh, okay. Because that's the basic plot of the book. It breaks its own rules. So, like, I yeah. thought that was really bizarre, and the fact that it came immediately after they said that. <laughs> that's is... what made me think it was intentional, because it just was so obviously backwards, you know? Yeah, I don't... I don't know. And to me, it seemed like lying, because... When they were weighing the babies, he said, mine weighs more or something. Like, he did be told a lie, too. Which, they said, oh, yeah. they can't lie, either. So, it broke a couple of the rules immediately after they stated them. Um, yeah. The only thing I can think... Sorry. No, go ahead. What were you going to say? I was going to say, the only thing I can think is maybe they were trying to, like I said, like, do it on purpose and just show that even in this seemingly perfect society, like, even with all the control that they have over these people, like, they still can't control their human nature and that they still do these things that's the only thing i can think because they did seem to do it on purpose yeah. but i don't know that's the only thing i can think yeah maybe the um like you said humans are so flawed that they've controlled it to a point where it now just leaks out in very unharmful ways like playing yeah because you know I, mean? I will say for this they did say like the shot numbs their emotions and everything but they did say that their primal instincts still shine through or something like that mm-hmm. yes i guess it's forgivable yeah. if that was their intention but it didn't uh make sense to me yeah i agree with you but yeah i agree i like the acting the acting was good it had a good cast and it poses really good interesting philosophical questions about society the other thing that didn't make sense to me was i don't believe that they had any art of any kind because they'll allow for that would allow freedom of expression which they didn't like that, and then they prevented that from happening. Right. But then you could see in the structure of their buildings and everything, that was mm-hmm. aesthetically pleasing with a giant arc that they would walk across. And the main character ends up using one of the food trays as a sled. Right. And they slide down that. So I don't know, it was just weird. I don't know why they would make 
things didn't look necessarily practical, as, but they also looked beautiful as well. So that breaks another rule, kind of, in my mind. They had like yeah. a waterfall, and they would hide behind it and talk. That mm-hmm. seemed like purposely artwork to me mm-hmm. by design. So it doesn't seem to hold to its plot very well. Yeah, I agree with you. There's a lot of stuff like that intertwined where you're like, wait a minute, what? Like, and wait, are these your cons then, or? Um, I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's kind of mixed up. Like, the way you did your... <laughs> I was just doing what you were doing. Basically, <laughs> things are kind of interconnected. Oh, uh, okay. I like the visuals of the movie and everything, and that was why I got into oh, the okay. design because I liked some of the architecture and you know. Then, but to like it would mean that it doesn't fit with the plot. I see what you're saying. Yeah. They're all kind of interconnected. Gotcha. What are your cons? Uh, did you say all your pros already? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I feel like this scenario wasn't that believable. Because I'm pretty sure in real life, the memory keeper people would have been kept away from their society in order to keep the secret secret. It just doesn't make any sense to me to do it the way that they did it. And they also acted like they cared about no war and everyone getting along, but would kill babies if they weren't progressing at what they considered a normal rate. And that just doesn't even follow the principles they claim to care about, in my opinion. And I would argue that they would have kept music because music without their strong emotions would have just been a good thing, I think, because their shots were keeping their emotions in check. So I don't see how music could have been bad. So stuff like that just didn't seem to match up, kind of what we were talking about. And then being released to elsewhere was obviously going to be death from the beginning. And Meryl Streep appears randomly as a hologram into people's houses, but somehow they don't have cameras in the giver's house, <laughs> although they seem to have cameras everywhere else. So I was just kind of like, alrighty then, it doesn't seem to follow logic. I don't know if you'd agree with that, but... Yeah, we can address some of the stuff you're talking about. I just wanted to let you get it all out first. Okay, I just have two more then. Um, the giver wouldn't just sit by and wait for a new memory boy to fight the system after what happened to his daughter. I feel like he most likely would have wanted to go to elsewhere with his daughter or fight them himself, not sit around and like roll the dice that someone else is going to come along and want to do that without even telling them that that's what he wants to do. But even if he would really wait for some future boy to fight the system, he wouldn't have risked freaking him out early and doing that war thing. So I don't know. I don't fully understand if he was like having a dream and didn't have a choice, but it seemed like he chose to go there and like he didn't take any precautions to make it where the boy couldn't just come in and walk in on him. So that just seemed odd. If his whole fight back scenario relies on this kid, why would he risk it like that? You know what I mean? I don't know. It just didn't make sense to me. And then the ending itself didn't make sense because all Jonas does is touch the edge of their community and suddenly their black and white world turns back to color and all their emotions return just from touching it. And it didn't make sense that they could make the world black and white to begin with. And they never gave an explanation that I recall. Unless maybe the shots themselves somehow did that to their eyes where it blocked color or something. I guess you could say that maybe. But that makes the ending even make less sense because they all had the shot still. So touching the border wouldn't have like removed the shot from their blood. So I don't see how it would have magically transformed them all. But I guess if you think about how the memories pass from the giver to the receiver... It's just through touch. So they clearly have some powers that the real world doesn't. So I guess in the strange alternate reality that they seem to live in, then I guess maybe all of it makes sense. But I don't know. Those are really just my cons. So it sounds like you don't really have any cons at all from what you're saying. (laughs) What? I'm being facetious. Oh, Um, yes, sarcasm. I'm like, (laughs) I just talked for like 30 minutes about all my cons. I was like, what do you mean? That's funny. Yeah. Like I said, it's sad. I'm sorry you didn't like it. I can understand why you would feel that way, though. Yeah, well, well, look, I did give it a three. Like, I did enjoy watching it for certain things, but it did have a lot of hypocrisy in there that didn't really follow logic for me. But again, I mean, if you're going to go with the whole magic realm, alternate reality, where anything really goes, then I guess it makes sense within its own boundaries, but I don't know. So can you start with your first con, and we'll go one by one? Yeah. So the first one was... I don't think the memory keeper would have been incorporated in society. I think they would have had him out somewhere else. You know what I mean? Where he couldn't give away all the secrets. That just didn't really seem like something they would do. If they're really strong on keeping their society the way it was, you know? Why would they do that? So he lived in a house at the very edge of society where it was very dangerous even walking there, um, the main character said, because you could fall off being so close to the edge. The old man, you know, the giver the original giver 
his demeanor, he was very like sourpuss basically. If you looked at the way he interacted, he really didn't interact with any other people. He attended meetings that he had to, but he really kept his mouth shut and you could tell he held a lot back. So I feel like he was separate from society um, as much as he could be. Well, think about the, uh, what's the other guy called? The So one's the giver and one's the receiver, right? The, the receiver kid, Jonas, uh-huh. he was fully incorporated with the society. Like he had friends still he would talk to. He was allowed to lie. He lived with his family still. That's what I'm talking about. Like but, maybe that guy, if he's proven himself enough, can go back. But I feel like they were upset about what he was doing, but they weren't. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think that there would ever be a scenario in real life where some kid can just give away all our secrets and don't you do that. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like they wouldn't. Yeah, they said the original giver said that he did that when he first started out, too. Or at least that's what he was telling the council. Yeah. Um, so it's normal to want to share. And it's. I think it would have been really traumatic to cut him off from society completely just upon taking that role. Especially when he's about to learn the truth about his reality. So I think that's why they did it. And uh, it obviously got way out of the end of the film, which is the whole point of the show. Yeah. Because he could only share with them up to a certain point, I think. They talked about there's certain things he couldn't ever share with them. Of course, that's when he got him taken off the drug so that he could go further with it. Right. But I think the idea... I don't know. That's my own bias. I just feel like they obviously... Okay, they're murdering babies because they're not well, the right weight, right? Like, I, don't, like, huh? I was just saying we were taking it point by point. And you seem like you're getting ready to go into something else. No, this was going along with what we were talking about. So they obviously don't care about murdering babies. So I don't think they give a shit if this kid doesn't like being taken away from society and learning the stuff. You know what I mean? I don't think they really care what people feel. Like, I get what you're saying. It would be easier on him to stay with his family and stay with society and everything like that. But I feel like if it's based around, like, the logic of keeping their secrets under wrap, they don't really seem to care too much about what how it affects them if the that makes sense the role of the giver and eventually the receiver once he takes his place is to be an advisor to their council so and mm-hmm. society so he still needs to very much be a part of society if he's going to advise them on it he's going to hold on to these truths that he doesn't have to share with other people and he's not supposed to but they don't want him like outside of society because he needs to know what's going on so i think it's this weird balance and i don't think they want him as part of society but they know to fulfill his role he has to have this tenuous relationship i mean i guess but i also feel like they could just have someone kind of like an inner person who knows kind of um and can go and, yeah yeah and he could go ask the questions you know because I, mean? I really don't think if he knows it more than they do i don't think he needs to be a part of their society to know what's going on but again this is all my biased opinion like i just feel like if i was running a community i didn't want these secrets out i wouldn't be like come on down and let's have pizza like yeah, sure. <laughs> don't tell anyone the now I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. And it might have actually uh, worked out better had they had one. So, mm-hmm. um, what was your second con? Well, I don't know if you want to do all of the first one, because I kind of had a bunch, like, in intertwined in one. Yeah, yeah, we'll see how close they are. Okay, so it was that, and then it was the baby thing. Like, I don't see how it matches up with them saying they care about getting along and no war and all the stuff, and then they're killing babies. Like, the whole concept that they would do that was weird to me. Yeah, I understand. So he said, how can they kill babies? And they said, well, with they being on their shots, they don't understand what they're doing at all. They know what they're told to do, but they don't understand the concept. Oh, yeah. I don't mean the, the people of society. I mean the government people like Meryl Streep. They know what they're doing. And so I don't see why they would, you know what I mean? If they really believe in everyone getting along and no war and this great society and stuff, why would they do that, well, I guess? it's kind of like the utilitarianism. So it's kind of like the great, it's, it's a wrong action necessarily individually, but collectively it's for the good of all people. So it's kind of like a sacrifice that is worth it. But I get where you're coming from. And most people would say the ends don't justify the means. So a wrong action is a wrong action yeah. no matter the outcome. So that's just more of an ethical question. But I, so it's definitely valid. It just depends on how you want to take it. I see. That makes sense. Because yeah, I don't think they wanted to kill the uh- babies. They just seen it as if they didn't equalize everyone, there was going to be trouble. For all of society. Yeah, I guess in that twisted <laughs> way of thinking, it, it makes sense. Yeah, because they were twins, weren't they? I think that they were twin babies, you know, and they were getting rid of the one that was defective, basically. 
Yeah, you know, I think yeah, I do remember that now. If they raised them together, yeah. they were there was they couldn't equalize them. So one was always gonna feel better than the other one. So I think maybe that's what it was, but I'm I'm not sure. They didn't make it very clear. Yeah, that's true. I don't feel like they went too deep into why they did certain things. They just kinda this is the way it is, which is fine, but I think I would have liked if they delved into that more. Yeah, they were keeping a tight runtime, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's why i was thinking the book probably is a lot mm-hmm. better because there is time to go deeper into these things and answer some of the questions that the movie gives you and uh the only other part to this first one was i feel like they would have kept music without their strong emotions that the shot prevents i don't see how music would have been bad so i don't know yeah i mean that's, yeah, that's a good point i mean the way I interpret it, music is deep within us. It goes back to the beginning of Mankind, and um, it always can evoke huge emotion. And as you said, the shot kind mm-hmm. of tempers that, but maybe it can still come out. Such as when they got the um, the lunch trays and they slid down the, you know, that arc. The girl got really excited, even though she was still in her shots at that time. So... I'm guessing they leave music out because it's a very, very powerful, innate thing within us that can inspire us. I think a lot of wars and political movements all have music attached to them. Anything with action and inspiration, music kind of guides us. Yeah, so maybe they just didn't want to take the risk, Yeah, I guess. Once you have music, what, what kind will you have? And if it's going to be, if it, any of it leans towards agitation or you know, really strong, <laughs> if it slips into negative emotion, it could then inspire people towards violence, basically, or at least change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this society's big on not changing. Change is very slow, if at all. So I guess they didn't want the music to inspire them to do anything. Yeah. But I get what you're saying. That makes sense. Okay, so the next con. Do you have a list of cons you want to read too? Or we, because we're mine to some more tiers already? Uh, or? Yeah, they were basically, it's, that's why we're tackling them together. Cause, uh, oh, okay. I just thought that would be better. Okay, yeah, that works. I just wanted to make sure we weren't, like, skipping yeah. anything yours. Okay, so the second one then was being released to elsewhere was obviously going to be death. I feel like that was a given. And I think some of them in society even kind of realized that, but maybe that was me reading into it. And um, Meryl Streep appears randomly as a hologram into people's houses. So why didn't they have cameras in the giver's house and stuff? They seem to have cameras where it was convenient for the movie <laughs> and not logically but you know? Um, well, I think... From what I think they might have said is the Giver house had a very special place in society with special privileges, given the fact that he wasn't on any shots and he was prone to all these negative emotions. So he's prone to embarrassment and wanting to keep secrets and everything. So they don't get to look into his house, I guess, because he's maybe going to be engaging in things that no one else does because he's fully human. So it's kind of like a privacy type thing. He needs yeah. that house because humans innately need privacy, but in this... In this futuristic society, they don't need privacy because they would never hate having sex. They would be never doing anything that would require privacy. Though I don't know All right, I'll give it to you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, but that's just an example yeah. <laughs> like, of something you might do. Maybe like masturbation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense. It just seemed weird because, like, she can see everything, but not in the one place that she really needs not to. Not that time, yeah. So, but that does, yeah. like, yeah, I guess that does make more sense. I guess one thing in picture, so, you know, the- it mortified them and they said pull the camera out <laughs> that would be they funny actually craft, didn't they, in the movie? they didn't address whether they used the bathroom or not uh they didn't go at any point but that doesn't they mean eat, i guess that they so didn't <laughs> <laughs> okay so the other one or the next one is the giver wouldn't just sit by and wait for a new memory boy <laughs> i feel like he would have wanted to go with the daughter to elsewhere or fought himself instead of waiting around. And if he did, I don't think he would have risked it by doing that war thing where he could have walked in at any point. Yeah. I um. Do you think that his daughter and then the main character, do you think that they had the same reaction? And it, he had been erring on the side of revolution internally with his thoughts. And then when it happened the second time where this person couldn't handle the truth, it was just too great and truly morally reprehensible to allow the society to do this. He felt like he had to act at that point. But wouldn't he feel more so when it's his own daughter rather than some random kid? Yeah, I mean, that's true. And it, it sounded like he was on the breaking point, right? Like, when they were giving him the new giver mm-hmm. assignee or the receiver, they seemed to be very worried. And they're like, you got to get it right this time. And I think it's because the daughter took him to the brink. 
and then this new receiver pushed him over the edge towards Revolution. Yeah. He was trying to hold it together, and then when this kid came along and reacted the same way, it was like, I cannot, yeah, this is wrong, blatantly, like, clearly wrong. He was like, yeah, I agree with you, bam, I'm all, you know. At least that's the way I interpret mm-hmm. I get your point, like, it should have been the daughter that pushed him over the edge. Yeah, you would think you would join your daughter, and, I mean, not everyone, I guess, would, so it's not like it's an illogical thing, I just feel like most would. No, I get you, I can definitely see But that. who knows? Um, I just, I think that's what they were going for, is the fact that he is still conflicted in the end, because this society didn't have hardly any negative things, but yet they weren't truly alive, and they were engaging in things that were morally wrong, like killing babies. Right. Um, I kind of get you, you know, I really do. I think you can go either way with it. Yeah. The last one was the ending didn't make sense because Jonas touches the edge of the community and suddenly their black and white world goes to color and their emotions return and everything, but they're on shots, so that shouldn't be. And also, how the hell did they control no color anyway? Unless the shots do something to their eyes to where, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. All of that just didn't make sense to me. In the beginning of the movie, we have the main character having flashes of color where he sees the girl's hair before he's even the receiver at that point. So they're acting like seeing in color is this oddly strange quality. So, and how are they achieving this? It makes it seem like it must be technologically inactive because you get by this yeah. and it kind of like destroys the entire structure of their world. So I agree. I think it's just one of those things where you take it face value that they had the technology to achieve this. It doesn't make logical sense <laughs> that I can see. Mm -hmm. yeah and they never explained like i would have even accepted if they explained like oh we have this and this and this and that's why that it were able to you know but they just didn't so uh, but the whole concept of touching someone to transfer memories i mean we can't do that in real life either so no i'm true Um, (laughs) yeah that's a good point it didn't make sense but it did i guess in their own way i don't know so just those were problems that i had with it which is why i didn't like it very much because there was a lot even that you agreed with that isn't consistent, you know? So it wasn't a terrible movie, but it wasn't great either. But I do think it's a, an okay watch. But um, it's not super high on my list of great movies you know, or anything. Laugh was, uh, they were talking about the memories on their first session. And he said something about these memories aren't mine. They're super old. Um, but then at the end, he slides on the same sled, like, to the cabin that still stands. You know what I'm referring to? So, yeah, uh, like, vaguely. His first memory was of riding with a sled in the snow and then seeing this cabin with like people in it singing, I believe. But <laughs> and then at the end of the movie, he goes and does the exact same thing. So it's not that old of a memory if all that stuff is still there. So I don't know. Like in my mind, it wasn't that old. Oh, I see what you're saying. I think, oh, I don't think I could be wrong, but I don't think he was saying every memory that they have is super old, but a lot of them are, I guess. Yeah, I don't like know. Me giving you a memory of like Disneyland. I say it's super old, and you actually go to Disneyland and do the same thing I just did in the dream. <laughs> well, that's what makes me think some of the memories are old and some aren't, but who who knows? Like, I don't... Oh, you know what? Maybe it was just a straight lie. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and maybe it was old as in that memory happened a long time ago, but the, that activity can still be done. Like, it's not, it's not old in the sense that it's so ancient that it's not possible anymore. Yeah. Yeah, but I think we need a society like that. It's much better. <laughs> no color, no music, no fun. Yeah, it's worth the price. That's the question. I mean, would you give all this up if you could have peace? Yeah, but they didn't even have peace. They were still, like, upset about what career they were going to end up with. And you know what I mean? They? Like, it's not... That's why it didn't make sense to me, too. Because, like, they weren't even giving them what they're claiming oh, no, they have. That way. What do you mean by, like, they were talking about their jobs they were going to get? But I, don't, I didn't stand to them being worried about that. You know, like fearing it. I think they were like the one kid was just like, I don't feel like I'm good at anything, and what are they gonna give me? And oh god, and you know what I mean? And then like the one guy didn't want to be uh what he was chosen for, and you know what I mean, stuff like that. Like I don't, maybe it's minor in comparison to some things that could happen, but I don't feel like anyone was like especially happy in that situation. But yeah, I could be I wrong. So. I got the sense that they weren't completely fulfilled. I, I'll definitely agree with that, but I don't know about them. Yeah. Like, being up all night worrying about what jobs they're going to get for the rest of their life. And like I said, you got to weigh that against. They didn't have to worry about getting a degree or, or affording a job. They didn't have to worry about all these small things. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there are some perks, I guess, but I would rather not <laughs> live in a society like that. I say boo to right, them. It's, boo it's to like them. Whatever society you live in. So say you live in America, you have the freedom to do whatever you want to do, right? 
but you could also wind up on the street. <laughs> you can't find a job that pays enough. So there's freedom <laughs> with risk. But then if you go to like a country like China I mean, right. or another country where they hand you a diploma after graduating and in it has your job that you're going to do and you never have to worry about having enough. You got your job. You might not like it, but you can survive. You're, you're never going to live on the street. So both have perks, I guess, if you want to look at it that way. So yeah. one would want it based on their competence. If you lived in America and you were highly competent, you would want that freedom because you could then explore it and you would never, the fear is very minimal for you. If you're the type that has low intelligence, very little ability, and you're living on the street, you might say, I wish I had a government that would give me a job. So <laughs> I guess it's based on you. Like it's based <laughs> on everyone's individual circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of jobs, though, where you don't, it doesn't take much mental to do. I mean, do they pay mental capability to do, but that's a good point. No, yeah, I, so, probably not. Like I said, it's just, I get, I see both sides of it and it's very complicated. So it's a shame. Yeah. But that's what this whole idea is based off of. It, it takes out the competition. Everything's competition in life. And like even uh, competition within people's families. The whole thing called sibling rivalry. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think that's why the deep-seated fears of communism and, yeah, socialism and everything like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way it comes down to, I think, is we always err on the side of freedom. Like, if you don't have freedom, and if you take away the risk and take away the freedom, it automatically leads badly at some point. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. What do you think? (laughs) I don't know, man. Yeah, they're complex social issues that been around for as long as humans have been around and we don't know how to solve them adequately yeah we should all just live at disneyland Um, (laughs) and look at the ideas of the afterlife right where there's all equality right and there's all freedom so you have the best of both in this alternate world (laughs) that's beyond the physical and really that's what we're aiming for i guess with technology 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 to help us function better what we want which is we want the freedom but we also want the security we want people to be individual individualistic but we also want people to be collectivistic we're not demonstrably equal in the way that society requires us to be so it's you know like i said it's Mm -hmm. one of these things where we want our cake and eat it too basically but our reality is just not set up to we ourselves as humans and society is just not set up to give people the full picture you know everything we would require for peace which is kind of depressing when you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sad. Ow, my They're butt. Out my butt. Called the taker. <laughs> I think my butt just fell asleep and I can't get my leg untwisted from my blanket. <laughs> Ow. Did you hear my no, ankle pop? This is awful. Okay, I'm untwisted. That was crazy. My butt cheek fell asleep and then I tried to get my leg out from underneath and it was twisted in the blanket. <laughs> Okay? That was funny. Yeah, I'm fine. It was more just humorous because I couldn't escape. Anyway, the whole movie should be set to one song. You can't stop the beat. You can't stop <laughs> the motion of the ocean. You can't stop the music. 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 Yeah. <laughs> you want to close the episode out, or did you want to add anything? Uh, no, I pretty much said everything I have to say. You hated it. <laughs> I didn't hate it, or I wouldn't have given it a three. I just, it wasn't amazing. More amazing than you'll ever know. (laughs) I don't think so. (laughs) Well, I enjoyed the movie, and (laughs) I think it's worth watching or reading the book. I would suggest reading the book, but if you're a movie person, I would watch the movie. It brings up some good questions and good ideas, and it makes you wonder about what is in store for us as a civilization and what type of life we will want for ourselves in a futuristic world that is not bound by the limitations that we currently are under. What does peace require? Mm -hmm. And that's something to really think about. And if it requires us to give up who we are, then is it worth it? So, I will leave you with that. That's a wrap.